Hello everybody, welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie, for those who don't know me, reviewing Love Island Australia, season five, episodes 15 and 16. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell, and leave a comment down below. Typically, the videos will not be bulked or this late, but as most of you guys know, it was my birthday a few days ago, and uh, now I'm back home, so we're back on track, okay? The episode starts with Tyra, who's very nervous to tell Aiden that maybe it's just a friendship between them. I think based on the conversation they had about the whole bed thing, not that it's a big deal, but clearly they were both like, meh about it. They could tell that the feelings were maybe more friendship than romantic. So his response was kind of like, okay. Like he really just was not pressed at all. So they are now friends. Now, Nate, doesn't want to be overbearing. He doesn't want to keep a leash on Georgia. So he's like, hey, go ahead and do your thing. It is what it is. If you come back to me, that's cool. Georgia thinks that's very sexy. So she decides to go and do her thing. Unfortunately, doing her thing is talking to freaking Trent. I've been told I've had like nice feet. You should sell them. Yeah. She comes across as so sweet and so innocent. And then when you get to know her, she's actually like really a really naughty girl. <laughs> Okay. Yeah, I'm happy. You're happy. I told you I get what I want. <laughs> I want to remind everybody um, that this is my age group. I just turned 27 two days ago. Like these are the caliber of men I have to date. When I say pray for me, I mean it to whoever you pray to. Please, it is so ghetto out here. Trent is somebody we actually want to consider as a viable option. Are we serious? Are we serious? And then I don't even know what type of time Georgia is on because I thought she had her head screwed on, but she's after this boy as if like he's God's gift or something. Okay, that's being extra. But I'm just like, it is very clear that all Trent wants to do is take Georgia down. And she either doesn't see it or that's all she's looking for as well because honey, in what world would Trent and Nate be on par with each other? I'll wait. Zach and Lucinda get the hideaway. We're not gonna focus on that. But what did happen was that they told each other that they love each other. So presumably when the two new bombshells come in the next day, you would think that they are completely off limits. Yes, but not exactly. So if we saw him out of the club. I would fuck him. I'd fuck him, yeah. Yep, 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 yep. yep. He is so my type and so Hot. I feel like I'm about to wet myself. His skin looks beautiful. I'm 100% closed off. <laughs> I'll put it out on the table right now. That's cute. Yeah, I'm free. Yeah, yeah, I'm free. Open 24-7. <laughs> Twice on Sundays. Basically, everybody is like, hey, it's open season for me. We're good to go. Besides, obviously, Zach and Lucinda. Now, with Lucinda, I've noticed that she does kind of have a wandering eye a little bit. She doesn't fully act on it, but she has a higher tendency to be interested in somebody who's not Zach. Whereas Zach is like, oh no, Lucinda's my girl. Like there's no question about it. That we're sold. That's it. I really would have thought Zach would be the issue, but maybe potentially in the future, I'm not wishing this upon them, but potentially Lucinda could actually be the issue in their relationship. But moving on with Zach, he's having issues with loyalty all around because his best mate, Trent, now has a new best mate, Seb, who's coming to the villa. They already know each other from the outside. Um, not Zach being jealous that the true love of his life has another love of his life. And I'm talking about Trent, not Lucinda. <laughs> Anyways, uh, Seb made a good impression on a lot of the women. They are definitely interested in him. With to see it, to, to no, not to see it, Tasia. With Tasia, she likes Nate the most aesthetically and read the most when it comes to their conversation and interest. That really annoys me because I feel like Reed is a chameleon. Reed will say and do whatever he has to say and do in order to get a girl. But then when it comes to nurturing that connection, MIA, nowhere to be found. So as of right now, okay, he's doing a good job in trying to win Tasia over. In the next few days that she's there, he really is laying it on thick on her and it's working. But is he really serious? If you ask me, I'll say no. 
On the other hand, we have Nate who also has a good connection with Tasia. The issue is Tasia likes Nate who still is into Georgia, who also has eyes for Trent. And honestly, Trent is tired of this whole triangle slash square situation. For a good few seconds, talking to Tasia, like I, I almost forgot about Georgia. I think she said to the girls that she's really interested in Trent. She said that today. Georgia said she really liked Trent. I think she just said she liked Trent a tiny bit more than Nate. So your head's out at the moment, it's like, you, you want me? Hundred percent. I'll say something on the outside with you. Hundred and ten percent. She moved to Sydney. Hundred percent. I know my worth, and I know I don't like being second place. So, eventually, she has to make a decision. If I was in the minds of either of these men, being Trent and Nate, I would be like, the fact that you're torn between me and that other person specifically would just make me fall back. Because Trent, in my opinion, is nothing like Nate and vice versa. And they both don't even respect each other's game per se. They don't really vibe with each other on a personal level. As boys, you kind of just have to get used to who's here. Like you can't pretend like somebody doesn't exist. But I would think on the real world, these two men would never be friends for real. So if I was one of them and I'm looking at Georgia who's genuinely torn on us, I'd say, you know what? Let me make the decision for you. Let me just fall back. And then you can have that man all to yourself because Georgia, are you serious? Trent and Nate? Girl, be all the way for real. They play a game. It's always a kissing game as we know. What Tyra was turned on by Seb's kiss. Savannah makes Aiden horny. Tasia's top three are Reed, Aiden, and Nate, which did make Georgia a little bit jealous. Abby wants a bit of Andy, who also wants a piece of Tyra. So that's interesting. Trent got a kiss from Georgia, but when it came time for Georgia to pick, she chose to kiss Nate. Okay. And she then says like Nate turns her on more. But she's not saying this to Trent. To Trent, she says whatever he wants to hear. To Nate, she says whatever he wants to hear. To the women, it depends on the day. Sometimes it's Trent who's above, sometimes it's Nate who's above. Basically, who she's more into is based on who's the last person she spoke to. That's what I'm gathering when it comes to Georgia. So at the night, in the night, whatever, Trent is being advised by Zach to throw Nate under the bus. Honestly, Zach is such a bottom barrel man. It's embarrassing. So his advice is to throw Nate under the bus so that he could be the victor when it comes to fighting for George's heart. I don't know in what world that actually, it works on Love Island because that's, that's what Zach did and he got Lucinda, so there you go. But anyways, um, he was going to do it. And then the next day he hears from the other women that mm, Georgia is actually more into Nate, according to what was last said to, um, the women. So he's just like, okay, what, what's the deal? If I make you feel the way you're explaining, then I feel like that, that, that's a really <laughs> good thing. Told you that. I do feel a bit pressure though from you more than Nate to like make this decision. Yeah. I just thought I would like come in here and like feel like an immediate spark straight away, but I haven't. I want it to be the right decision and then I keep getting worried that it's not the right decision and then I cry. I cannot believe this girl is crying over the predicament of choosing between Nate. Nate. Our sweet baby cherub, okay? I think that's redundant because the cherub is a baby. Um, Nate. Over Trent? At this point, I would say just pick Trent. Because at least with Trent, he's wholeheartedly into Georgia right now, as it seems. I'm pretty sure once they would like get physical, he'd be over it. But um, at least he's only ha he only has eyes for her right now. Nate is considering talking to Tasia, but he's also focused on Georgia. He has options. Trent doesn't. Girl, if you're this torn, go for Trent. Tyra gets summoned on a mystery date. And in my head, I was like, could it be Kale? Baby, it sure enough was. <gasps> oh my God. <gasps> I was asked like what my biggest regret was and your name was like the first thing yeah. to come out of my mouth. Mm -hmm. Nakia was single, you were not. I didn't really want to step on anyone's toes mm. or piss mm -hmm. anyone off. Yeah, yeah it's very it's different. Hard, yeah. yeah, I probably should have done this two weeks ago. This is how you fall in love. 
I got two things to say, probably more, but we'll start with two. Number one, this is why you have to stay true to yourself and the things that you want to do. Because what do you mean you were still thinking about Tyra after you apparently became exclusive on the date that I did not watch between him and Nakia? You became exclusive with Nakia and you had all this heat for her on the way out. But you were thinking of Tyra and that was your biggest regret. And now you're coming back and you want to be with Tyra. Okay. Secondly, everybody was up Nikia's ass talking about how quickly she got rid of Kale. Even though it really wasn't her decision. She did not discard Kale. It's, it's literally just the way things panned out. So anyways, this man is so quick to turn around and be like, you know what, Nakia, your friend is actually who's been on my mind all the while when we were together. And if I had a second chance, I would want to couple up with her. And matter of fact, let me kiss her to show her what I should have done weeks ago. I was like, oh no, I'm sorry. The same energy they had for Nakia, they should definitely have for Kale, if not more so. But are they going to? No, they're not going to do that. Anyways, back at the villa, they get a text um, and Aiden is um, notified that Tyra has recoupled with this mystery man. Now, for some reason, that lit a fire under Seb. Don't know the correlation, but I guess maybe because, you know, things in the villa are unpredictable. He decides to go and talk to Savannah. Do you have makeup on right now or not? You actually, I can... Everyone tells me I look better. Yeah. Don't. I'm like... This, she's smart and she's funny oh, and, and she's attractive. I like think the same about you. I want to be able to laugh with someone yeah. like they're my best friend. Yeah. It's like say really out of pocket shit. Yeah. There's a fun side to Sav and there's also, you know, a side of Sav that's, that's serious and can definitely take the conversation with more depth and with more intellect. I was very happy to see this conversation because finally Savannah is connecting with somebody who's seeing past the sexual, seeing past the surface. And I, I hate to be that person because I don't like when men are like, oh, you look better without makeup. Like, mind your business. I do it because I want to. But Savannah really does look better without it. Like she really does. And a lot of people do look better without it. We do it because we want to. Some of us, some people actually do have an insecurity. Savannah genuinely looks so naturally beautiful. I don't know if it's maybe too much bronzer or something that throws off her, her makeup looks, but the natural honey, it's eating. It's eating, honey. You look good, bare face. Absolutely. Okay. Um, yeah, he seems to be the first guy who's not focused on, oh, she's a freak. Oh, she's sexually liberated. Oh, I'm trying to see what she's like in the bed. Like he genuinely wanted to get to know her. My hope for Savannah is that she sees that and she appreciates that. Unfortunately, my impression of her so far is that after a while, she's going to be bored by that. She's going to want somebody who's more adventurous, sexually explorative, stuff like that, which isn't a problem. It really isn't a problem. It's just both. Why can't you have both? Have somebody who is on par with you sexually, you know, you're sexually compatible, but sees you on a deeper level too, is there for your intellect and your character and your personality and all that stuff. And it may be too soon to tell, but so far it seems like Seb might be that guy. So yeah, we'll see. In the evening, there is a recoupling. But before the recoupling, this mystery man who Tyra went on a date on and couple up with is now revealed at the villa. <laughs> the villa? I, baby, I, I, was, I was shocked too when I even knew what was going to happen. Oh my fucking God. Kale was the last person I was expecting to see. And were you happy to see him? I was, yeah, over the moon. Did you always have a spark for each other? I think so, yeah. 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 We'll chat after. Yeah, welcome back, brother. Hey, mate, good to see you. Casting aside, this is why Australia is my personal favorite version of Love Island that I watch. If I could learn the other languages, I would watch those too. But as for the English versions, honey, Australia's top tier. It really is. And UK and US, because they've done it too. This is how you bring somebody back. You bring somebody back who's going to make an impact. He had another person in his mind while being exclusive with somebody. And that person he was exclusive with, 
you went with somebody else and then and then they're now in a strong couple with them and then the friend is and then you come back and then like it really made an impact Mackenzie coming back in the US did nothing for anybody Molly coming back in the UK did nothing for anybody like I'm so sorry those bring backs did not hit Kale coming back now this hits because I'm thinking to myself logistically how is this going to work Tyra you claim Nakia is your girl and you did not pursue Kale at the time because Nakia is your girl. Is Nakia now no longer your girl? Because she didn't want to get rid of Kale. She didn't know Kale was going to go. So I'm sure the feelings are still there. But then again, Nakia, you were supposed to leave with that man. And you didn't leave with that man. So does he really mean that much to you? I don't know. I don't know. Like there's a lot of moving pieces here. And I'm here for every second of it. Getting back to the recoupling though. We have Tasia who chose Reed. Seb chose Savannah, Lucinda chose Zach, Nich Nich Oof, Nakia chose Andy, Georgia chose Nate. Now that's enough from you, Georgia. I don't want to see no more back and forth, okay, honey? We're tired, okay? Georgia chose Nate and Abby was last and she chose Trent. I cannot believe that when put side by side, it is Trent who stayed over Aiden. Seriously. We're never gonna rid of them. We're never gonna rid of them. Every time we're this close to getting rid of either Zach or Trent, they both manage to stay. It must be producers, it has to be. It has to be because why, why? Anyways, Aiden now on his way out is like, oh, I have regrets of not pursuing Savannah more. Well, snooze you lose, sweetie. Snooze you lose. This is Love Island. Anything can change by the day. Go with your gut. Who cares whose feet you're stepping on? Go with your gut. Be honest about what you're doing and stay true to yourself. Now look at you. You leave them with regrets, just like Kale. You might not have that same luxury of being brought back. So, yeah. Anyways, the next episode is bringing a bombshell. Her name is Chloe. I didn't really hear much about her, but I have a feeling Trent is going to be all over that. Yeah. He's never going home. Oh my gosh. I also don't think they're going to do Casa Amor. It just, we're, we're just so far in the season. Like, wow. And this, this cast doesn't even need Casa Amor. They have their heads on a swivel. You don't need to separate the villas. You really don't. They are totally fine with looking at the next hottest thing. It's, yeah, the season is good, man. Season is good. I wish the casting was better, but it is what it is. As always, please make sure to like, comment, share, and subscribe. And I'll see you in the next one.